Well, looks like we have uh, three others joining. So welcome for those of you that are on it. And uh, um, we're going to take a little bit of time to just talk through uh, um, a few of our solutions, um, both from us as a company, but also, um, you know, Lightspeed and ViewSonic, uh, um, but also talk about some of the challenges that are being faced just with return to school and some of the different um, uh, things that we're hearing as school districts are considering, um, you know, what ret return to school looks like. Um, I'm going to be talking specifically about various scenarios and I will start out and share just from an audio perspective, um, some things to be thinking about uh, and ways that we can help in that. And then Dan will be turn, um, taking the ViewSonic portion in kind of the second half to talk through, uh, you know, what ViewSonic brings to the table in terms of some uh, things that'll um, enable your uh, teachers and students to be further equipped, uh, both from a visual and interactive side. Um, uh, they gave us this slide, so thank you to the sponsors uh, that are doing this event. I hope it's been a great event for you so far um, in the different uh, uh, virtual uh, sessions that you've been able to attend. Um, we're thrilled to be a part of it. Uh, from a light speed perspective, um, we've been in business for over 30 years providing instructional audio, uh, both within the classroom and as we've navigated to digital learning, uh, we've uh, added some additional tools that will hopefully enable you to be successful in that model as well. Um, just in terms of the different scenarios that we're seeing as we're talking to districts around the country, and I was just at a superintendent conference last week uh, where I was uh, talking to a lot of different superintendents and just the different scenarios that they're uh, hearing um, about return to school, I think kind of falls into four primary categories. Um, you know, a lot of states right now are providing their kind of guidelines for what uh, they expect in terms of what return to school will look like. And I think probably the name of the game as we return is going to be flexibility because uh, I, I have a feeling that all four of these scenarios could happen uh, for a lot of different districts around the country and a lot of different schools. Uh, so I kind of want to talk about each of them and kind of highlight them. And there's going to be different uh, hybrids of each of these, maybe, um, that are being discussed within your schools. Um, feel free um, at any point if you have a question uh, to put it into the chat bar, or um, uh, I believe I can unmute you as well. So I, I'm more than happy to do that if we want to have some conversation around that too. But the first scenario is what we would all experience is more traditional is all face-to-face. -face. Um, sorry, go back to that um, first. Yeah, go back to that slide. Uh, all face-to-face -face where all teachers and students are in the classroom. Uh, you know, uh, this is where uh, social distancing may be going on. Teachers may be wearing masks. Uh, students may be wearing But uh, in terms of the physical space, uh, everybody's back at school. Uh, the second scenario, which we've been hearing quite a bit about, is a hybrid. And obviously, we're hearing a lot about hybrid. And a hybrid means a lot of things to a lot of different people. Uh, but in this case, it means that students are learning together both with physical and a virtual presence. So uh, these would be maybe your A, B type days, where half the students are physically in the classroom, half the students are virtually at home. But as I'm speaking about it, what I'm referring to is um, those students are both learning together. So uh, it's a synchronous learning model where the teacher is physically in the classroom, teaching students that are physically in the classroom and virtually at home at the same time. Uh, so we'll talk more about that scenario here in a second. Uh, the third one is uh, a scenario that uh, may not be happening as often, but I think it's important for schools to be thinking through it. Uh, is where you have a remote teacher. Uh, we know based upon the COVID-19 data that it may not affect students as much or younger, uh, younger ages, but we have uh, teacher populations that may be at risk. Uh, we might have teachers that are, um, uh, might have family members that are at risk and uh, they may need to be um, away physically from, but we wanna be able to enable them to be able to teach uh, so there might be a scenarios where you might even have a teacher aide in the classroom that's keeping uh, classroom management in place, maybe doing role, um, managing some different things there, but you might have a teacher virtually teaching uh, those students that are physically in the classroom. And then the final scenario is kind of what we experienced as we closed out the school year where all students are virtual. 
and uh, you know teachers are virtual as well and we're doing uh, either um, uh, asynchronous learning where the teacher is doing some recordings or some synchronous learning as well uh, either through a Google Meet or a Zoom or uh, whatever uh, your district or school may be using uh, when it comes to that. So uh, at a high level, I think those are kind of various scenarios that we may see. There may be a few nuances to each of those, um, but uh, hopefully that kind of frames some of the conversation that we'll have. Uh, for us specifically, um, we're kind of focused on this challenge tied to the mask. Um, you know, I know LA County uh, provided some guidelines mandating that all teachers will be wearing masks when they return to school late last week. A lot of states are providing that as well. And uh, when we see that, inevitably, uh, if teachers are going to be wearing masks, there's um, gonna be an increased problem for speech intelligibility. Uh, we work with a lot of educational audiologists around the country. In fact, we have a webinar specifically around this topic next week uh, with um, a couple of the foremost educational audiologists in the country. Uh, what we know is that there's gonna be a loss of visual cues for comprehension. You know, The reading of lips, as much as 40 to 50% of speech can be gleaned. Uh, even just through seeing the lips move. And uh, that's a uh, key part of comprehension. And we're kind of taking that away by having the mask covered. There's some masks I know that are clear that can be kind of so that you can still see the lips. And I know that some SLPs and audiologists are promoting that. But whether that's going to be in place or not, um, you know, it's going to be an increased challenge for uh, the visual comprehension. Uh, obviously, the mask is also going to reduce the audibility or the loudness of teachers' voices. Uh, one thing that we um, continue to talk about is the importance of the teacher's voice being at 15 decibels above the ambient noise in the room and evenly distributed throughout the classroom. Normally, when we're in a physical classroom, the um, ambient noise is anywhere from 45 to 60 decibels of sound. And our goal is to make sure that the teacher's voice is 15 decibels above that. So usually anywhere from 60 to 75 decibels so that um, all students, no matter where they are, uh, whether they're furthest away from the teacher and especially with social distancing, that may be further away than normal, uh, or students that are even uh, you know, a standard six feet away are all hearing at an equitable listening environment. Um, there's also a decrease in intelligibility or clarity. You know, SOPs will tell you that vowels speak to the loudness of the sounds, but it's the soft consonants that really help with the intelligibility. And that's a little bit harder with a mask as well. Uh, you know, some of the softer consonants like the F and the TH, the difference between fin and thin, those are the kinds of sounds that help promote for the intelligibility of sound. And uh, inevitably, we're going to just have some increased teacher vocal strain um, as a result of this. You know, teachers naturally are raising their voice in order to be able to heard um, in the back of the room. And uh, they're going to have to be taking deeper breaths. Um, and there's going to just be increased challenges uh, tied to them being able to speak loudly. So historically, what we have done is simply provided a microphone for the teacher uh, within the classroom. So it allows the teacher just with a lanyard around their neck like this to have a microphone and to be amplified evenly throughout the classroom. We'll talk a little bit more about those solutions in a moment. Um, but just from a, um, you know, just a listening perspective, young children spend 75% of their school day involved in listening activities. Hearing is a primary channel by which they're uh, learning. And so it's incredibly important to be able to hear um, everything that's being said, both by students and by the teacher. And you know, this slide right here really highlights that. Um, this is one that we often talk about. Uh, children need to receive 90 to 100 percent of the information carried by the spoken word. Um, and a lot of times, young listeners just cannot fill in the blanks the way adults can. If you were hearing me right now, um, go ahead and stay on that slide for a second, Dan. Uh, if you were hearing me right now. Um, and only hearing about 50% of the words that I was communicating, uh, you would be able to piece together word, the words you're not hearing from the words you are, uh, because you have a wealth of education and a background to be able to piece that together correctly. But uh, children, especially young children, kindergarten through third grade, uh, cannot fill in the blanks nearly as well. As they get older, uh, that percentage goes down a little bit, but even all the way into middle school and high school, um, that's not quite to the level of what an adult is, um, you know, once the brain is fully formed around the age of 25. So um, it's incredibly important to make sure that speech is clear uh, for all students in the classroom. Uh, so what we do is, uh, in a traditional classroom, is provide teacher amplification where a teacher has uh, the microphone around their neck and allows them to speak in a regular conversational uh, perspective. And uh, that speaker is in the classroom. And uh, we have single speaker solutions that will evenly distribute that sound 
so that all students are hearing um, regardless of where they are. Um, that's particularly important with the mask being in place. We're working with a lot of districts right now that are putting in this solution um, in, over the summer simply because of the mask and the return to school uh, environment. So uh, this would be your more traditional model where you have all students returning back into the classroom. So we want to talk a little bit about more of those hybrid approaches and the digital learning models as well. So uh, the next slide kind of highlights that in terms of the scenario. Uh, it speaks to um, the teacher being physically in the classroom along with students physically in the classroom but also students that are remote as well um, that are going to be uh, live through video conferencing. Uh, what we have is a media connector that can then connect in and it can allow for the teacher who's physically teaching the students both physically and virtually uh, to not necessarily be tethered directly to that computer um, and we can make sure that the, uh, the crystal clear audio of their voice is being heard regardless of where they are in the classroom. We know the further away they get from that computer, um, the uh, intelligibility, especially for the students that are remote, is going to go down. So uh, with this, it allows for the teacher's voice to be able to be heard both within the classroom and clearly by the students that are remote. Uh, it also then allows for the students that are remote uh, to be able to speak and to be heard within the classroom. A lot of times in this scenario, um, the students in the classroom are not going to have uh, necessarily their individual, um, they might not be a part individually with the Google uh, Meet or the Zoom or whatever else is being used, um, uh, but they might be just part of the overall um, group uh, in that standpoint. Uh, so this allows for the students that are uh, virtual to be able to be heard. Um, in the next scenario, uh, what we add in is um, um, the same scenario, but also we're now adding in the idea that the students that are physically in the classroom need to be able to be heard both within the classroom, whether they're wearing masks, uh, but also virtually, uh, so that they can be clearly heard by those students that are remote. And we have a solution, quite honestly, that we've created um, and built and engineered specifically for this scenario. And uh, what this allows is for each individual student in the classroom to have a microphone. Um, and it's a tap to talk solution. So they simply press a button on the microphone and it activates their microphone so that they can be heard both within the classroom and virtually by all the students. Um, and it allows that connection through that media connector, um, through the interactive display, um, the ViewSonic panel, uh, and um, then also through the Red Cat or the classroom audio speaker. Um, so uh, when they uh, unmute their button, uh, they're then speaking live in that case. Uh, we also have a similar scenario that can be used with our Activate pods. Uh, these pods are, have been designed for uh, group collaboration within the classroom. It allows the teacher to be able to be heard, um, uh, to be able to speak to individual groups as they're collaborating with one another, and it also allows the teacher to um, actually have the control uh, so that that individual person or group can share out from that pod. Um, so um, th these are a couple different solutions to be able to uh, increase student engagement within the classroom and also to be able to add in a connection with the students that are remote. So um, this is the way that we kind of in integrate audio both within the classroom uh, with those that are virtual um, in a remote learning scenario. And then the final scenario is um, where you have a remote teacher and you might have a teacher aide in the classroom, uh, but this allows us to make sure that the teacher that is remote is uh, being able to be heard clearly within the classroom. Uh, you know, they may be live on the screen um, and uh, being able to interact with the students that are physically in the classroom or are virtual. Um, but it allows the teacher to then have that integration and uh, crystal clear connection between them. And in this case, you probably uh, are gonna have a teacher's aid or some kind of supervision in the classroom, um, you know, just to make sure that uh, classroom management is in place physically. Um, but uh, um, it then also then allows the students and probably even more important in this scenario for the students to be able to be heard within the classroom with the individual microphones um, or the activate pods. So, uh, kind of to bring all of that together from an audio perspective um, uh, from our solutions. Go ahead and go to the next slide. 
Um, we have our RedCat, which is a non-installed solution in the classroom that allows you to um, integrate with any visual displays or interactive displays that you have and also brings in the teacher full microphone. Uh, we also have the TopCat, which is an installed version. And I'll just highlight the RedCat is probably the most popular solution right now simply because it's a quick implementation. And right now, um, you know, districts that are looking for audio solutions are looking for something that's quick and easy. And the RedCat really brings that. It's a plug and play, non-installed solution that's gonna provide that even distribution of sound. It can be mounted on the wall or it can be placed on a bookshelf. Um, and all you have to do is plug it in and uh, the microphone is already paired with it and it's a very quick implementation. Uh, we also have the TopCat, which is a one by two that's in a ceiling uh, that is very easy to be implemented or a 955, which is a traditional um, amplifier that will go to multiple speakers in the ceiling um, or single speaker solutions as well. Um, we also have, and I'll just highlight it too, uh, if we go to that entire virtual model where the teacher is in, um, entirely virtual with students, um, uh, we have a solution called our mobile connector, which is simply a microphone that the teacher wears and it's a Bluetooth connection uh, so that it allows the teacher to be virtually connected and have crystal clear audio. A lot of times in a virtual setting, as we've seen, if you're physically right in front of your computer like I am today, uh, the audio is pretty clear and pretty easy to be used. But uh, sometimes teachers are using visuals and they're getting away from the computer a little ways. Uh, maybe they have a, uh, a board that they're presenting from or uh, providing some visual uh, pieces in their presentation. And that could be either um, in a recording, uh, asynchronous learning environment where they're doing a recording of a lesson uh, that's going to be posted, or it could be where students are actually physically with them. Uh, that mobile connector allows them to just have that around their neck and uh, to be able to be heard, um, uh, regardless of how far away they are from their computer. So um, that's a solution that was particularly popular um, in those virtual learning models uh, when we were um, you know, uh, in that scenario for the last couple of months of the school year. Um, and then the next slide kind of just highlights with any of those, we can add our student engagement systems, which is our Activate, which are these pods that can be used for small group learning uh, when kids are physically in the classroom. Um, and it can also be used for student share out uh, to be able to be amplified within the classroom and virtually, or our T3, which is our tap to talk flex mics, um, so that you can actually, um, you know, the student can tap it and then be activated um, with uh, the student having the control of that in the classroom. Uh, so we can, you know, build an audio solution that'll fit your return to school scenario. Um, so, you know, from an audio standpoint, um, you know, if you have further questions about kind of the return to school scenario that you have and what you're thinking about in terms of your district, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, we can uh, talk through those specific scenarios and we can think through um, the best solution uh, that uh, might be for your particular case. And I know for some of you, uh, you may already be familiar with our solutions or um, you know, various classroom audio solutions. Um, we can often uh, leverage what you have in order to fit um, you know, these digital um, or virtual learning models. So uh, that's it for me. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Dan to be able to talk about the ViewSonic portion and what they're bringing to the table for these digital um, and virtual learning models. Awesome. Um, so my name is Dan. Uh, I'm one of USONIC's professional development trainers. Um, I'm based in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I was in education for about 14 years. Um, I was an elementary and middle school teacher, as well as a math coach, uh, technology integration specialist, assistant principal, and pretty much anything I could do uh, in the school system. I just love kids and, and, and teachers and everything like that. And so uh, one of the, uh, you know, big things obviously are uh, interactive displays in classrooms. So I support, you know, with, with the training and, and kind of those components. Um, I'm not going to go too much into um, all of our hardware because I want to focus more on our software solutions. Um, but all these resources um, I do have in a folder, which I'll share um, at the end. Uh, I'll put it in the chat. So if anyone wants uh, access to these kind of uh, information packets that we've gone through, um, I'm happy to hand them out. But you can see here that um, you know, this is kind of the more traditional uh, interactive whiteboard, um, you know, that um, uh, is, is, you know, goes in the classroom, um, you know, up on the wall, mounted, carts, whatever you want to, 4K, 20-point touch. If you've ever, you know, had any kind of interactive display in your classroom, 
uh, I'll be honest, very, very, very similar. Um, and I'm not going to go into the detailed specs again. I'll send those out to you. Um, we also offer uh, non-touch displays, which can obviously go in classrooms or throughout the school. Again, various sizes. I'm not going to get into um, all that. Don't want to necessarily focus on the hardware, but I'll send all this out. And of course, you're welcome to ask questions about um, any of those. But uh, just as uh, uh, the focus with Lightspeed is on audio, uh, ViewSonic is very focused on the uh, video, the visual uh, interaction with students. One of our uh, more popular uh, products lately uh, because of COVID and everything else and teaching from home um, is this, uh, these kind of interactive smaller monitors uh, which you see uh, here in the classroom, uh, more specifically uh, this model here, which is our uh, TD2455. This is a 24-inch uh, uh, touch interactive monitor that connects with USB and HDMI, or um, if the computer has it, USB-C. Um, and so you can see here in this scenario, uh, you know, a full distance learning uh, solution where the teacher is connecting their device um, up to the touch panel, and they're kind of able to uh, toggle back and forth between their um, content that they're teaching from, um, as well as managing uh, the student side over there uh, on the left. The nice thing about these as well is that, uh, yes, they can be used at home. However, if you go into uh, that hybrid model, uh, you can go in and uh, take these and connect them to pre-existing tech in your building. So it could be like a projector or whatever, and you still get that full touch experience, right? You can just kind of daisy chain it through. So uh, we have schools who are using these uh, for, you know, hey, we're planning on having in-class instruction or hybrid instruction. But at the same time, if we need to go full virtual again, uh, you know, teachers can just pack this in their car and take it home and, and still be able to teach and instruct. Uh, that being said, this uh, distance learning piece, the hardware is really cool, uh, but really the meat of it comes down to the software and how you can uh, really engage and interact with students. And so uh, our software solution is called My Viewboard Classroom. Uh, you're actually looking at My Viewboard Classroom right now. Uh, we loaded the presentation up into it, but we're gonna go uh, kind of into some more uh, specifics about it. And so the nice thing about My Viewboard Classroom is it works on any platform, uh, Windows, Mac, Chrome, doesn't matter what uh, devices your teachers or your students have access to, uh, they can all access My Viewboard Classroom. And the best way that I like to kind of uh, talk about My Viewboard Classroom is it allows your kids to virtually come to the board, okay? If your kids can't physically be in class and come up to the board and participate in lesson, they can do it virtually with My Viewboard Classroom. So whether you're totally virtual or you're doing some sort of hybrid model, um, whoever is not present can still uh, participate and be a part of class. Uh, and it's really easy for, for teachers to use. Also, you don't have to worry about installing any software. It's all web-based. Uh, your uh, updates are all automatic. And this is something that's really cool. So secure audio and video. So obviously right now we're using Zoom uh, to communicate. So you're logged in, I'm sharing my screen. With my Viewboard Classroom, you actually don't have to use a third-party uh, conferencing program. So you'll see down here in the bottom right of my screen, uh, there's a little video camera. And if I click that, uh, what it does now, my, my camera might get taken over here. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, unfortunately, Zoom is conflicting with my camera. But um, as a teacher, uh, I can display my video and audio directly to students. Uh, through my Viewboard classroom. I don't actually have to use Zoom or another program. So during the lesson, students can see and hear their teacher, uh, and I actually don't see or hear students um, unless I specifically request a student to share or if they have a question and they want to ask. Uh, but there's no video on the students because obviously with privacy concerns, you know, looking in on a student's uh, home or in the room, uh, we don't do any of that. There's no option for um, enabling video. So it's really easy for teachers to manage. And of course, that's secure. So the way that uh, classroom works, so you can see here that I'm basically going through slides. So this is essentially uh, uh, your canvas or your drawing canvas that teachers use. So down here at the bottom, this little toolbar, this is called your 
uh, main toolbar so it can be dragged to the sides. So it has various teacher tools on the sides that they can use. And then down here at the bottom, this is my page manager. So if I click that down, I can kind of preview all my pages in my presentation, create new pages, close them out, those kinds of things. But the biggest thing is that teachers have tons of content already created. And so they need to be able to quickly pull in that content uh, into classroom and teach from it. They don't have time necessarily to start from scratch. And so, for example, they can import things like PDF. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to this tool that's here in the top left. It looks like a little box. This is called the magic box. And you can see here that I have my Google Drive connected directly. So I can go into any of my content folders, like my lesson folder. And you'll notice that I can import all sorts of different content. So if I wanted to bring in my action verb worksheet that I want to teach from with kids, I can click drag that into my Viewboard classroom and it will process it. Now, this particular PDF has uh, multiple pages. And so uh, what I wanna be able to do is delete these answer pages. So I don't want those imported and I want these two pages imported. I can click the import button, it'll process it and then bring in this content. Over here on the left as the teacher, I have some different tools like my pen tool or my highlighter. So then I can annotate on top of this and students can watch live. Now there is a student interactive piece, which we'll talk about in a second, um, but we'll just kind of focus on uh, teacher creating content. So uh, there's the first page and then there's the second page that gets imported. So I'm building my lesson. The next part is we're gonna import a Google Slides presentation. So again, go up here to the magic box portion. I'm gonna click on the magic box, go to my lesson folder, and this time we'll bring in a Google Slides presentation. So you can see here, there's the Google Slides presentation. Just click and drag that onto the canvas. Same process as the PDF, it'll let me choose which pages I wanna bring in. So I'm only gonna bring in a couple here. Click import. And then there's my slides. And again, you can see that the two slides are brought in. Now, again, from a teacher's perspective, I'm still just building this lesson. I'm not actually uh, teaching this yet. I haven't invited my students in. So your teachers can kind of pre-plan their content. They're not having to do it on the fly. I'm showing you on the fly because I want you to see the process that the teacher would follow. Uh, the next piece is that I can add images. And so uh, from the magic box again, um, I can use Google Drive or I can go into uh, a direct image search and I can pull in uh, direct images. So like if I needed a coordinate plane for my lesson, I could do a search and you can see here, it's just gonna pull from uh, like a Google image search and then I can drag these in and teach from them. So you really have the power of whatever is in your Google Drive or whatever is available to teachers on the internet to bring in some of that interactive content. Now. The third part, sorry, I wanna jump into here is the ability to bring in videos. And so I'm gonna create a new page here because again, we're a visual company. So we're all about you know, visual interactions, uh, bringing content live to students. So again, going to the magic box, you can see here that teachers can use the YouTube link to bring in whatever videos they need to use for their additional content. So you can see it does a YouTube search as a teacher, I can click the play button to preview a video, or just like any of my other content, I just need to click and drag it onto the canvas. I can resize this. And now I have a YouTube video ready for kids so that they can watch this as well. Let's create one more blank page. And this time from the magic box, we're gonna bring in a web page. So over here on the right, you can see here that I can add bookmarks down here at the bottom. So this is a little pro tip. If you've never used the FET website, this is a great math and science simulation website. But if I wanna do an interactive area activity for kids, I can actually use FET simulations as well as other websites and then embed those into my view board. So I'm just gonna copy the URL here from FET, go back to my Viewboard Classroom, I'm gonna paste the URL in, I'm gonna give it a title called Area Builder, 
And then I'm going to select this embed button here so that it's actually going to embed into uh, classroom, add it to my list here. And then I'm going to again, click and drag. So that's a common theme, click and drag out. And I'm just going to resize it. So it's a little easier for kids to view. And then they're going to be able to interact with this website on their computer. So as a teacher, I was able to import some PDFs, some Google slides, a YouTube video, as well as this interactive website. Now, teachers can save this. So up here in the top left, you see there's a little folder. Uh, this is called file management. And so if I click file management, uh, you can see that I can save all of my lessons directly into Google Drive and then open them later. So a little less stress for the teacher, they can prep ahead of time. And then when it's time to teach class, they can just come in here, click the folder to open it, and then that's gonna open the lesson for them. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna get a little interactive. Now, if you don't wanna participate, no big deal. I'm gonna do a double screen share here um, so that you can see teacher view on the right and then student view on the left. But if you would like to participate in the interactive lesson, uh, that would be great. I would love for you to do that. So we're gonna start uh, with our area activity. Now, in order to get kids to join, um, up here in the top right, you'll see there's this little triangle and that there's an ID code here. So the way that kids join is you, uh, as the teacher, send out this code to kids, or if you click it, you can copy this URL down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna copy that and then put it in our chat. So if anyone's curious about uh, what it looks like from the student view, you don't necessarily need to see my screen um, in order to participate, but I'm gonna just quickly stop sharing here for a second. I'm gonna resize my screens and then I'm gonna share again. So we'll go full screen here. And so again, over here on the right, you'll see this is the teacher view. And then over here on the left, this is where um, a student would be joining. And so uh, I can give students the login code, which is XTWR05. And then they can type in their name. I'll use my daughter's name, Lily, and then they can log in. Now, over here on the left, if I was sharing my video, whoops, let me mute myself, I'm getting double audio. There we go. If I was sharing my video, the students would see my video preview up here and then they can also hear me through the browser. So as I mentioned before, this is live. You don't need to use Zoom or anything else with this uh, product. It's all secure audio video direct from teacher to student. Um, if the student ever has a question, they have a little hand raise button here, uh, at which point they can raise their hand. That notifies the teacher that a student has a question and then I can unmute that student to let them hear. Uh, down here in the teacher view, uh, there's a little sidebar where I can see all the students that are in my class. Uh, this is a little bit uh, kind of nerdy, but you'll notice at the top, there is also a, a ping time for each student. And this is important because uh, when you're teaching virtually, you don't always know what kind of internet access uh, your kids have. And so if you have a kid with a really high ping, uh, they may not be getting the content as quickly as other students. And so it's important to know that so that you can slow down or maybe give more time for a student to respond. Wait time is super important in a real classroom. It's even more important virtually where you can't get those visual cues as we were learning about earlier. Um, and so I can kind of pay attention to the ping to let me know uh, if a student is, is able to participate or not. So uh, in an example like this, as the teacher, uh, I can pull out my pen tool, I can change the color, I can come in here and I can start writing on top of my slides that I imported. And you'll see over on the left, whatever I do on the slide shows up for the students as well. Now the students also have access to tools. So you'll see that they have a little toolbar on the left that is grayed out. Students tools by default are disabled. So I can come up here to Lily in the list and then I can enable her tools, which then turn on and I can say, hey, Lily, will you please complete the model? She can choose a different color or the same color. And then she can start writing on the rest of the squares. Again, this is live shared collaboration. So I literally virtually just asked Lily to come up to the board. She could do this from home on any device that she has available. Uh, we also have the ability to add text because we know that some kids don't have touch devices, right? They can't write, they can't annotate. So if I ask Lily, can you tell me how many squares there are? She can select the text tool 
click here, let's have her change her size to something a little bigger, and then she can add 12. When she closes this, again, everyone sees her response. So we get that live collaboration. Now, generally I just turn on one student's tool at once, but we could obviously turn on uh, all students' tools. And then as the teacher, when I'm ready to move to the next slide, you can see that it moves and updates all the pages uh, for all the kids. And now we can move on to the next activity. Again, enabling and turning on students' tools, letting them annotate and uh, uh, type or whatever they need to be able to do. They also have the ability to draw shapes, right? If you're doing anything kind of with shapes or highlighting. Now, the cool thing too is that kids can't uh, mess with each other, right? So if they um, are doing a collaborative piece, there's no writing over one another. There's no kind of interference. Uh, now as the teacher, I can you know, delete and erase and, and edit everybody's stuff, but students can't interfere with one another. Uh, back to and that. One, one of yeah. the questions that just came in by through the chat, uh, they ask, can you enlarge the teacher's video section to vote to focus on that instead of the whiteboard and switch between? That's a good question. So um, currently it does not, but it's in development because we did get that request. So I kind of fa failed to mention that uh, right at the beginning. So um, ViewSonic in our interactive displays, uh, we're one of the only companies that, you know, makes our own software. So, you know, Promethean makes their own, Smart makes their own, uh, ViewSonic, we make, we make this. And so uh, we're very uh, hands-on with teachers and schools uh, receiving feedback like that, like, hey, it would be nice if we could enlarge the teacher's view. That would be really helpful. Um, and so, uh, those kinds of things uh, we always are working on. So yes, th there will be the ability for the teacher's kind of video to be enhanced. Um, really the teacher video there for now is just to let the kids know that a friendly face is there, which I think is the hardest thing about virtual learning. Uh, again, we've talked so much about uh, visual cues and faces. Like there's just something about seeing your teacher's smiling, happy face when you're, when you're learning that you know, brings you down makes you feel a little bit better inside. Um, but yes, you're right, you know, have, being able to enlarge that will be nice and we will add that. Let's go to the next page here. And this is kind of uh, an example of a video. So um, what happens here is I'm able to play the video. Um, I'm gonna put this in presentation mode really quickly. And then as a teacher, when I play this video, I'm gonna mute it here so that we can't hear. And then hopefully when I switch this, it plays. And so now we can see the students also have the ability to play their YouTube video um, as well, kind of at their own pace. And so um, you can tell the kids to pause it at a certain point, uh, but you are able to bring video directly to the students live in your lesson uh, using kind of this what's called presentation mode. Now you'll, you will see some of these little ads here at the bottom that kind of pop up. Uh, that's more on the teacher side. Um, but we did remove um, ads in the front. So you like, you won't get those, you know, video previews for the 30 seconds or 45 seconds for whatever uh, ad directly at the beginning of the YouTube video. So that's the nice thing about showing them in my view board as they go um, kind of live like that. And then the next piece here is the website. So again, I'm just gonna throw this into presentation mode on the teacher side, which is this button down here by going in presentation mode, it basically uh, engages the website for the student. So here, now the student can go to explore and they can start using the website directly inside the My View Board software. Um, so I'm able to give an interactive component for the student. So it's not just writing and typing at the board, they can actually go in and, and, and use the website. Now as the teacher, I can't see um, you know, this website, like I can't, uh, you know, uh, view the student screen, really what I'm using it for is for them just to have a little interactive kind of component. And you'll notice that there's no URL or tabs or anything. So there's a lot less distractions for them to accidentally click and go somewhere else. Uh, they're stuck strictly here uh, on the website. And then again, as a teacher, when I'm finished, I can take it out of presentation mode and then we can go on to the next piece. Really quickly, I just want to point out when a student has a question, if they click the raise hand button here, you'll see that I get a notification over here next to the student name that shows like the hand going up like, oh, I'm raising my hand. If I click that, 
then you'll see that I get the ability to speak directly to that student. Um, I can also unmute that student if I want to hear them for the whole class, and then I can mute them again uh, to kind of limit them. So uh, you still get that live, um, you know, audio, but there's no video because we wanted to remove video from being able to uh, necessarily see the students. Up here at the top of the teacher view, you'll also notice that there's a record button. So in addition to teaching live, teachers can record up to 60 minutes of their lesson. Uh, 60 minutes is the max recording that Chrome will allow, so we can't go past that. And then they can save it to Google Drive. So if there's any students that aren't able to access the class live, they still will have the opportunity to go back and watch the recording um, of the teacher's instruction. And then remember, since it's collaborative, anything uh, other students do will also show up in the recording. Uh, there's also the ability to take screenshots. So you'll see here that I can take a screen capture from um, of my screen or from one of my webcams, or if you had a USB document camera connected as well, you could do that. And so the nice thing about this is that teachers can um, essentially hold up their work, right? Like if they have a, a non-digital content, which a lot of times teachers have, uh, they can basically hold it up to their camera and then hit the check mark and then that will take a screenshot. Uh, I should have stolen one of my son's uh, documents. I don't actually have one, but you can see here, it took a screenshot from my other webcam and then I could add this to the whiteboard and then use it as part of my lesson or if I wanted to save it to Google Drive, I could. Dan, one of the other questions that came through was uh, um, one person logged into your um, uh, interactive uh, presentation. They said, is there a reason I'm not showing up on your student list? That's and a good question. Let me throw that in the chat again, just to make sure it's working okay. Click on that one, Jeff, and see if that works, or maybe hit a refresh, because you should show up in my list. While you're trying that again, Jeff, um, I just really want to briefly uh, show too, we have this uh, option in the file management called QR share. So in addition to being able to send a video out to the students, uh, you can export this as a PDF, your whole presentation, uh, including all the annotations. And so, um, yeah, Jeff, I'm not sure why that's not showing up. Um, same result, just the my cloud picture. I wonder if it's because I'm in present mode. I'll check on that uh, in a second, but the QR share, now this is a big presentation, so um, it'll take a minute to export, but you can see here the QR code is processing this as a PDF, converting it, putting it in Google Drive, um, and then uh, it'll give a QR code displayed for students so they could scan it, um, or you can copy the short link for students to basically have notes um, in PDF format. Okay, um, we've got about five more minutes. So what I wanted to do is just open it up for uh, any questions, uh, either for ViewSonic or for Lightspeed about any of our products or solutions. Um, I did wanna briefly just point out that um, if you go to myviewboard.com, I'll put that here in the chat, uh, you can play with this product right now. Um, it's available to everybody uh, right now for free. If you uh, decide that you want to um, uh, purchase one of our uh, products, uh, ViewSonic software is free for uh, any of our customers. And so uh, you don't have to worry about any software licensing or anything like that. And so if I go to myviewboard.com, you can sign up using Google or OneDrive or whatever account you want. And you'll see here, there's a tile called Classroom early access. Uh, this product, believe it or not, is uh, not technically final. Uh, we still have some bugs to work out. Uh, we're expecting uh, first week of July for final release. But if you want to go play with this now or have your teachers play with it, you're more than welcome to. Again, it's free. They just need to sign up at myviewboard.com. Uh, it's free for now. And then later, uh, if you buy uh, even just one of our panels, uh, one of our products, we'll get you set up with accounts for as many licenses as you need. So feel free to use it on any of your existing boards or any of your existing panels. Uh, they don't need to be ViewSonic panels uh, to run this software. Uh, we really believe in our products and we wanna make sure that it's as easy on your 
uh, schools and district as possible. So any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to unmute yourselves or throw them in the chat. And then I will go and get the, um, let me get the documents here and I'll share them so that everyone can have access to those. Dan, one question came, uh, how would you compare my view board to Jamboard? Yeah, that's a really great comparison. Um, so my view board is like Jamboard, um, but uh, I would say 10 times more interactive. So I, um, I actually still work with Google for Education. Um, I have a lot of friends who are trainers. I'm a trainer as well as an innovator. Uh, I showed this, so uh, one of Google's premier trainers who was doing Jamboard, I sat down with him and showed him my view board and he went, oh, okay, this is really nice. And the biggest thing for us is one, you don't have to use a third party video. Like I don't need to use Hangouts. Uh, with Jamboard, I still need to use Hangouts. Uh, with my view board classroom, it's all built in. Uh, the second piece is that I can pull uh, my content directly in. So like Google Slides, uh, PDFs, those kinds of things uh, directly on uh, to the canvas. And then um, I can also add additional content like uh, videos and websites and things like that. So a good comparison because they are both live interactive boards. Uh, you're just going to get uh, more features in terms of the content that you can bring in, uh, you know, all in one package. It doesn't mean that I couldn't still use Hangouts with Jamboard or I couldn't use Screencastify to record my lessons and those kinds of things. It's just classroom packages it all into one product. And I just shared the documents in there for anyone who would like to see that. I believe we have all of our documentation. And um, let's see here. I threw in the light speed presentation too, if that's okay. Yep, absolutely. Thank you for that. Of course. So hopefully everyone can get access to those documents. Actually, I realized that it's limited just to ViewSonic, so let me open it back up. Okay, now everyone should have access to all the documents. Also, Lena Cole's on the call, uh, FYI. So um, Lena is the one who really uh, deals directly with the hardware, so feel free to reach out to her for you know hardware questions and stuff like that. Um, like I said, for me, I do a lot of the software, so. All right, everyone. Um, Oh, what was the hardware we recommended? So any of our products um, give you access to um, unlimited. So we had talked about the IFPs, which are the touch interactive panels. Um, so let me just share one more time. So that's a good one to start with. Uh, it could be as small as our TD2455s. And so um, let me jump on here and show this. So uh, we talked about the interactive panel, so these were the touch ones, which you can see here, right, that would go kind of mounted on the wall. Uh, we actually have paired these with the Lightspeed audio products and they work great for that hybrid learning um, using, you know, the interactive panel, the audio products from Lightspeed and then my Viewboard Classroom. Uh, but if it's purely at home, uh, some of these uh, smaller TD2455s, which is this one, you can see here in the top right, it's just this little uh, touch monitor that can kind of fold into uh, like flat or it can stand up. But all the, all the information about those products are in the folder that I shared. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, everyone. We got to get uh, turned around for our next session. I'm not going to end the call. So if you just want to uh, let yourself out, uh, we're going to kind of... Uh, reset our presentation and get ready for the next group. But thanks everyone for coming. We really appreciate it.